Sorry about your mother. Hi. I told you, I'm staying here to look after the farm. I'm not getting stuck here for the rest of my life. Mother and you. How's Larkin dealing with it all? He'll be fine. Oh, I almost forgot. I think it's a list of things that she wanted to do, you know, before the illness took her. I'm not going anywhere until Mum's done every single rest. Right. We do Mum's list, and then we go down to Margaret's. Then, deal. How many's on there? One hundred. A hundred? Look, no, come here! You might have warned me before you gave it to him. Decentralized Pictures Talent Cast. I'm your host. I am here with Nick Sadler, executive producer for Academy Award winning film and Irish Goodbye. Winner for the Oscar for Best Live Action Short Film. Thanks so much for being here, Nick. Uh, thank you for having me on. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, so it's been a little over a week since you and team brought home the Oscar. So how are you feeling right now? Uh, I've actually just woke up this morning feeling recovered. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely, um, it was pretty, yeah, it was pretty intense. Um, uh, just, it, I went, I only went over there for four nights and I kind of decided to do it last minute. So I'm in London. So, you know, it's like an 11 and a half hour flight each way. And then we're out there and then, you know, we won and then we partied and like, yeah, it was, and then I was fitting in meetings as well and doing interviews. So it was just really full on. And when I came back, it, I, I sort of then had to do about a week's worth of work in two days. So yeah, I sort of, I, I only really kind of got some time out on Sunday a couple of days ago. Um, but yeah, I, it, it's, yeah, it, it was, it was such an amazing experience. I, yeah, I mean, we we had already won the BAFTA, which is basically the um, the UK equivalent of the uh, Academy Awards. It's yeah, it's just as big as the British um, Academies, and so the wheels were already kind of turning, and there was lots of excitement. Um, but yeah, I, I, I um, you know, as I was saying earlier, you know, I've got a I've got a young son, so you know, I'd be doing a lot of traveling, and I was like, maybe I shouldn't go out. My wife was actually like. If you win, you will totally regret not being there for the win. I was like, you know what? You're right. So I, I very last minute um, booked a ticket to go over and and I made a little bit of a schoolboy error as well. Um, so for anybody out anybody out there that's ever nominated for an Oscar, um, all the pre parties, dinners, meetings all happen the week before, like the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday before the Academy Award, not after. And I, I don't know why I thought this. I thought it would be more afterwards because, you know, maybe if you won, you'd get more meetings or something like that. So I actually flew out on the Saturday and, and stayed until the Wednesday. And, and then sort of I realized on the Tuesday I was getting into uh, I was getting invites to um, the various dinners and um, and meetings and whatnot. And I was like, oh, I'm not there till Saturday. So, yeah, I, I, I learned a little bit there. And, um, yeah, but it was amazing. It was amazing. The, the other really cool thing is, when you win an Oscar, you are um, you're allowed into the Vanity Fair after party automatically. Like for every Oscar that you have, you're allowed to bring in a carload of people. So what people do is they book a 22 person limousine and then they rock up. And so because uh, because we had um, because it's written and directed um, uh, by uh, Tom Berkeley and Ross White, so they had two. They had a basically a they got given an oscar each um they we basically managed to get in two limousines into vanity fair and i was like ah oh, you know is this, is this true or not and we pulled up and they said come on in and then i was like oh my goodness gracious me here i am and they were like just it was like being in a dream there were just celebs everywhere um I'm, i met trevor noah james corden ellie golding Megan Fox, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, Charlie XX, uh, Seth Rogen as well. Uh, that was definitely a highlight. And 
he was just finishing off a zoot when I met him as well, which I thought was pretty funny because that's kind of what he's known for as well. So, yeah, it was it was such a was such a crazy out of this world experience, and yeah. Okay, so I, I got to pull on that thread a little bit more. Um, so you're at okay. Obviously, congratulations, huge night for the entire team um, around an Irish goodbye, and we'll dive a little bit more into those details on the film itself. Um, but okay, at the Vanity Fair party, did you play it cool, or were you just like a little starstruck at times? Like, okay, I I can't. Help I myself. so I've been in enough situations with celebrities in the past, and for, sort of from the, my music industry experience, mm -hmm. to kind of play it cool. The one thing I did do is I sort of just went like I I didn't. One thing I I didn't do is I didn't get a uh, I didn't get a suit or anything. I just went smart casual, and then. When we got there, I was like, oh, I kind of wish I wasn't quite so smart casual. I felt like I felt like I was in basically a T-shirt and like sneakers by everybody else's standard. Um, but, you know, like I, I the, the funny thing about it is when you're there, there's no VIP section. Like, mm -hmm. the you know, because I've been to parties and like there's a VIP section there, the celebrities are and stuff. And maybe you bump into them at the bar or something like that. But here, like the entire thing is a VIP. Like there is no VIP section. You are, everyone's a VIP and, and everybody is sort of like, they know everybody's there for some reason. So everyone's sort of not necessarily has their guard down, but they're definitely, you know, they it's at a safe place where they feel like there's not crazy fans or anything coming up to them. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of just have chats, but I, I was a few times though. I also, you know, didn't want to be like, you know, because I was going up and introducing myself to people. So it's mm -hmm. once a lifetime opportunity, possibly. And, you know, some people were pretty cool in having a chat. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, it's just like, especially if I got someone that was sort of walking the opposite way, I was like, hey, I just, you know, I just wanted to say I'm a big fan of your work. And um, I just want to shake your hand and say, nice to meet you. And, oh, that's awesome, man. Nice to meet you too. Catch you later. And, and, you know, and then other people that were kind of standing around could have a chat. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it was a good experience in that. But I, I do feel like a few times I maybe just like went, hey, nice to meet you. Thanks. And walked off and then they're just sort of standing there by themselves again and maybe thinking, did you not want to continue the conversation? Like, <laughs> why are you here? Like, And also, like, I've sort of got a reason to be there. Like when they say, why are you here? Well, our film just won an Oscar. And, you know, so, yeah. yeah. But it was it was, yeah, it was really, yeah, it was really amazing experience. Incredible. Incredible. Well, I could talk to you probably for an hour about the Oscars, but let, let's <laughs> let's move on. So tell us a little bit more about your production company of First Flights and then the First Flights 3. Yeah, so uh, so First Flights is it's not so much a production company as I guess an executive production company, if mm -hmm. if that's kind of a thing. Um, so what I do is help um, help money raise films. Um, I set it up um, with Goldfinch, um, who are an equal partner. Um, so they're a film financing company in the UK, which is headed up headed up by Kirsty Bell and Phil McKenzie. Uh, and then uh, and Phil and I work pretty closely on the FF3 side of things as well. So um, on the on the how we help how we help. Uh, raise funds for filmmakers there's a couple of ways um, we run a um, short film fund twice a year um, so people apply for that um, and then we whittle it down through a, you know our selection process which we're going to talk a little bit later about um, and uh, we get it down to the winners and we we win anything we off we um, give grants up to ten thousand US dollars um, anything between one and three uh, winners and so an Irish goodbye was one of the winners of the f very first short film fund um, that I ran and then the second way is we do uh, we cash flow um, tax relief here so in the UK um, we have a tax rebate system I, I think some states in America do that as well um, so you know if, if it's 20 percent so we'll say hey look we'll cash flow that 20 percent and then we'll claim that later for you and and we kind of take a fee so yeah and, and and around that as well we offer advice and you know we have a radar where if um, anybody who becomes shortlisted we've got a little bit of an open door where they can email us and ask us advice on hey what's the next step I should be doing here there and and, and everywhere so yeah, the, and the ultimate aim really is for the shorts to become a feature. Um, so we're developing a film called Legs um, by Selling Coltrane at the moment. Um, and that is um, to be yeah, developed into a feature. And hopefully we're going to be filming that in September this year. And that was from a short film that did quite well. Um, it didn't win an Oscar, um, but it still picked up some good awards. Um, so yeah, so that's on the film side. And then 
um, off, off, sort of off, we've been running that maybe for about three and a half years. And then about a year ago, or a year and a bit ago, we um, started FF3, which is essentially is a crowd raising platform on the Polygon blockchain. Um, I was, I, I found when I was looking at what filmmakers to work with, we were, I was looking at their short films that they'd already done. Um, and a lot of them were making, were using uh, Indiegogo or Kickstarter to raise money for their, um, you know, for their funding for their short. And I thought, hey, maybe we could bring this in-house and kind of do our own, you know, our own crowdfunding. And then at the same time, uh, Phil was, um, you know, well, we were all kind of looking at like the crypto scene and and Web3 and it's a really exciting thing. And um, through a, one of his partners, um, he uh, said, hey, why don't we do this on the blockchain instead? Um, and so we linked up with a couple of developers that he knew, and, and that's how we sort of launched FF3. Um, so yeah, the, and, and we sort of, and we can talk a little bit late, uh, a little bit more about that uh, and the future of that. But yeah, those are the kind of those are the two, two, two companies that we have. Cool, cool. So how was an Irish goodbye produced? Was it in the traditional sense of, of call it film two, or was there a film three component attached to that? Yeah, so they were they were film two only. We hadn't uh, film three was only to twi a spark on the twinkle of my eye. No, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> something like that. I think I I think I got that wrong, but yeah, that was just a, an idea. So yeah, very very traditional. So they um, as well as the grant money from us, um, they had soft money from um, Screen Island as well, uh, and then they had a private investor put some money in. Um, and yeah, and I, I think the budget was about 18, 19,000 pounds, which is about 25, about 25, 28 grand, uh, sorry, us dollars. Um, so yeah, very traditional in that sense. Um, yeah. And yeah, so from our, and from our side of that, you know, we went through, they went through the submission process. Um, so we whittle it down to the, to a, uh, short list of 12 or 12 and 15, um, I think in their case, it was about 12. And then at that point, we have independent judges come in uh, and then rate the films. Uh, and we also, alongside that, interview all the filmmakers as well. And then based on um, their interview, based on the independent judges, we then uh, give out the grant. And uh, yeah, and we, and we also, alongside that, um, especially with the short films that we make, uh, we also do a, um, a lot of helping out with um, their festival planning, marketing, um, so an Irish goodbye when it was long listed, I know through a uh, a meetup that we do here in London, a film three meetup, um, a guy who is on the Academy Awards branch of short films. So he was he saw my name come up when he watched the film, and he was like, "Is is same Nick Sandler?" I was like, "Yeah," and he's like, "Oh, amazing!" So he said to me, "Like, oh, right, if you've been long listed, if you want to get shortlisted and win, like these are all the things you need to do." So I was like, "Oh, can you meet the guys?" And so introduced them to him, and he kind of gave them a lowdown, and you know, you need to get this PR agent and stuff like that. So, you know, we do a lot of that. We do a lot of kind of helping out where we can with filmmakers to, you know, to to take their film as far as it can go. Excellent, excellent. So. So thinking about film two and, and film three, and I'm going to piggyback a little bit off of a decrypt article that I just read uh, where you did an interview right around the Oscars kind of talking about this topic. Do you think that film two and film three are kind of siloed in their own independent processes or can or can they blend? Can can film three in some way augment the existing process that already that's already in place? Yeah, that's a good question. And the answer is it actually has to for it to work um, and i think that's what everybody in the industry is realizing in the last year uh, it's going to be very hard to have a 100 percent pure web 3 project um, some people say you know web 2.5 i think is, is a term but you know it's gonna have to be stepping stones to have people come on board and embrace film three. Um, so, so for us, so we've pivoted in the last year, right? Um, you know, when we when we started out, we were like the FF3 platform is raising uh, funds to make your film on the blockchain. And so we did Stephen Graves, The Dead of Winter, and we created, you know, some NFTs. And that was like a whole like I had to the last minute I had to lean on a, like a, a friend of mine who does uh, artwork for like Marvel comics and stuff. He's very talented. Luckily a very close friend of mine to kind of, Hey, can you create some 
some stuff for this film that doesn't even exist yet, you know, create a poster and stuff because we needed to have some sort of content, you know, NFT type content. So pe people kind of could, you know, when they're buying into something, they've sort of got some reward al almost initially. And, and what we realized as well is, you know, looking at the three films that did uh, well last year, the, the three big uh, film three. So um, Miguel Faust's Catalita, Julie Pacino's Keepers of the Inn and um, Cameron Hoy's Flinch. They were all projects that already had content around them, you know, whether it be a short film or existing film or um, stills that they'd, they'd done um, as part of the um, of the filming. And that, and so it was very easy for them to get momentum and build up a, a community and audience around them. And it was a lot harder doing it when you don't, you know, you've just literally got a script and a pitch book. So we've pivoted and gone, hey, so how can we... How can we work with a web, a film two type um, film, for want of a better word? Why don't we look at films that are um, are complete or coming to their completion? Um, but especially if there's an independent film, they still need money for marketing. They still need money for distribution. Um, to do a proper like festival strategy, you might need 15, 20K. You need to pay, pay for PR, hotels, everything. Where's that money going to come from? Well, now you've got the film that's been made. Now you've got the content. Well, why don't you come and raise those extra funds? Um, create a, the, a a branch for your film, which you know is, hey, we're going to embrace the Web3. We're going to create some NFTs. We're going to use it to create a community around this film um, using this platform. And so I think that's that kind of stepping stone between Web2 point, you know, Web2 and Web3. Um, so it doesn't have to be all or nothing. It becomes a, um, a a branch of the bigger picture of it. So that that's our vision now for the next year. Excellent. Well, so everything that you just said makes perfect sense to me. It's going to make perfect sense to you know the audience, decentralized pictures, other film three organizations. So as we continue to try to blend film two and film three, have you seen, and, and even through the ascent of, a, of an Irish goodbye, you know, going to all these festivals, all of the success, all the way up to the Academy Awards, I'm sure you've had lots of conversations about the, the First Flight's three uh, mechanisms mm -hmm. and benefits of, of utilizing the blockchain. How is that appetite? Is, is the appetite growing? Are you still, is it really a hard sell still? Where are we at in that process? Yeah, that's a good. That's a good question. I think people know that it is that even just stepping back from film, I think people understand that Web three using cryptocurrencies is is going to become part of the mainstream in the future. Like people kind of get that on all levels. You know, you've even got the UK government now doing their own initiative to start their own coin. So, so that that's going to be in place. And if that's the case, well then. All industries, not just film industry, music industry, like the building industry, every industry is now anything that has any kind of financial like element to it is going to be touched on that. So I think so I think most people know it's going to become part of the industry in the future. What does it look like, though? I think that's where people are unsure and there's the confusion and maybe some people are like, we'll see how where this goes. Uh, for me, I think we're the real the the game changing point is really going to be is when you is when the FCA and the SCC figure out how to have fractionalized royalties for creative projects um, that don't require vigorous KYC and they're not seen as securities um, and that 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 is gonna that's gonna be the game changer because then you can actually say hey you can own a a small segment of this film so you have that ownership and you have that connection to the project. Um, and if it does well, you know, hey, you'll actually be, you know, you can, you know, make some money. You put $100 in, you might make $10, your money back and $10 off the back of it um, or more. So that that's that's when it's going to be, that's when things are going to change. And, you know, we'll see how that how that pans out. I, I hope they do something where it's like projects under a million dollars, say. They, they just have a cap level and it's anything under a million you're, you know, you can have divided up to it between a thousand um, fractions, um, no more, any how you want. And there's like a, a far more basic, like, yeah, you just got to identify the person by 
you know, making sure they got a, I don't know, driver's license or something like that. And I, I like, I, that's, that's how I envision it happening. And my fingers crossed that it does, because it's not just for filmmakers, it's for all creative projects, you know, in the music industry as well. Um, it'll be a game changer. Uh, so yeah, that that's kind of my take on the future and, and the industry temperature on it. Right, right. Regulatory clarity. We've been, yes. we've been saying it for years. <laughs> yeah. And, and we, you know, we looked into it as well. Like, Hey, and we even had it as part of our business plan. We'd, we'd put some money in the, in the pot to like, um, you know, investigate how this can work. And, you know, but then we were like, there are bigger, bigger companies and bigger wheels turning in this place. Like, cause once one does it, it sort of, it does it for everyone, right? Like it, it's mm -hmm. not like it's going to be on an individual case by case. So, um, so yeah, we're just, we're stepping back now and letting the bigger companies and, and that figure it out. Uh, and then when it is, you know, we'll be able to come on board and, and embrace that as well. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So what's next for first flights? So, uh, we're currently doing the, um, Holly shorts, um, short film fund. Uh, so it's a short film fund. We're doing it in conjunction with Holly Shorts. We just want to strengthen our kind of ties um, across the Atlantic. Um, so we are in the early bird phase for that. So, oh, sorry, we're in the we're in the regular um, submission phase for that. Uh, and then next month it goes to um, uh, the late bird phase. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even saying that right. Uh, and then once that goes through, we'll we'll then kind of go through the winners of that. So we're focused on that. Um, but the probably the biggest thing we're doing for this year is um, creating a education platform. Um, because what we've realized is, you know, for people to move from um, film two to film three, there is a lot to understand, you know, even just like, how do I set up a MetaMask wallet? Uh, that can be very complicated and and you know we were finding we're spending a lot of time doing that so this year is especially because the markets have um you know uh, been a little bit um bearish you know and a little bit unstable everybody's kind of not sure what's going on um this is a a, a good time to step back go right like what are the what are the benefits like why should you be involved in this like 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 educate yourself up on this so then when the markets do turn around, things become more positive, things become more settled. It's like, right, now you know what to do. Now you know how to embrace this. So that's a big part for us. We're going to launch in CAM this year with the education platform. Um, we've just been securing partners around that at the moment. Um, yeah, and so we're, we're sort of just, that, that's that's the focus on that as well as as well as looking for the, uh, looking for the next Tom Berkeley and Ross White and, uh, and our next uh, BAFTA and Oscar winning film. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, interviews like this just, just fortify my confidence in, in, in Film 3 and Web 3 and, and what the future may hold. It's, a, it's an exciting time to be part of this space. So, Nick, thanks so much for being on the DCP Talent Cast. And, and again, congratulations to you and, and the rest of the team on the Academy Award. I personally must say that hearing you know the entire audience sing happy birthday to James Martin was like the most magical moment ever in Academy Award history. So <laughs> uh, it was, uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. It was absolutely amazing. I, I hats off to the guys for pulling that off. Like, and it seemed so rehearsed, but yet it wasn't just everybody just went with the flow. They had that short amount of time, which was exactly how long it takes to sing happy birthday. <laughs> they did it. They went off the stage. It was, it was genius. Absolutely genius. It was indeed. All right, man. We'll look forward to seeing, um, all the exciting things that are going to come out of first flights uh, here in the near future. So thanks again for joining us. All the best. Thank you, Matt.